1997 was a transitional year in pro wrestling that was important in setting up the WWF for its record-shattering Attitude Era. So much happened during the dawn of the Attitude Era, from the rise of Stone Cold Steve Austin to the birth of D-Generation X, that it's become one of the most well-remembered years in pro wrestling. One of the best things, in my opinion, that happened in 1997 was the Bret Hart heel turn and the formation of the Hart Foundation, a faction that somehow managed to stay heels in the United States, but in most other countries around the world, they were absolutely loved. This video takes a look at the Hart Foundation in 1997. Bret Hart had came back to the WWF in late 1996 after losing the WWF Championship to Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 12. And while things turned out well for the Hitman initially during his comeback, it wouldn't take long before things didn't quite go his way. He felt he was robbed out of the WWF Championship at In Your House It's Time. He had technically won the Royal Rumble at the beginning of 97 only for Steve Austin to jump back into the ring and claim the glory and he won the WWF Championship at Final Four, only to drop it the very next night on Raw in February. Brett was coming across as a crybaby and a complainer who would throw his toys out of the pram when things didn't go his way. The thing is, he wasn't really wrong. Owen Hart and Davy Boy Smith had been a successful tag team during a fair portion of 1996, but their relationship was also getting rocky. In the midst of their arguing, they had a great match against each other at the European Championship Finals, one of the only times the duo actually tried to settle their differences in the ring. The bickering continued, and it seemed that Owen and Davey were on the brink of a complete breakup that would have led to the tag champions facing each other in a lengthy feud. Stone Cold Steve Austin was rising in popularity during 1997, something that was getting under the skin of Bret Hart. When it was decided that Bret would not be competing at WrestleMania 13 in the title match, he decided to take out his frustrations on Steve Austin in an incredibly good submission match. For more information regarding this match and the Steve Austin Bret Hart feud, check out my previous video all about the WrestleMania 13 submission match. But in short, Bret defeated Austin, but Stone Cold never gave up, making Austin a babyface in the process while Bret was turned into a heel. The night after WrestleMania 13 on Raw, Bret came to the ring where he apologised to his fans in Europe, the Far East, Canada, all over the world. Bret, however, told his American fans that he apologises for nothing. Bret explained that no matter how much he wins, when he goes back to the locker room, the fans in America make him feel like he lost. Bret was bitter that the fans of the United States were cheering for guys like Steve Austin and Shawn Michaels after Bret himself had always tried to do right. Bret went on to take more jobs at the American fans, saying that America glorifies criminal conduct, which got him a loud round of boos. Bret put the icing on the cake when he said he does not respect American wrestling fans and they can all kiss his ass. This prompted Shawn Michaels to come to the ring where he cut a very entertaining promo on Bret. Shawn called Bret Markman as he explained that Bret's problem is he believes he is a legend in his own mind. Shawn offered to throw down with Bret and when Shawn's back was turned, Bret attacked and got Shawn locked into a figure four around the ring post. The following week on Raw, Tag champions Owen Hart and Davey Boy Smith were booked into a European title match after their bickering reached a boiling point. During the closing moments of this match, Bret Hart hit the ring, stopping both men from further ripping each other apart. Bret grabbed the mic and told Davey and Owen they are only fighting to satisfy a bunch of American wrestling fans. Bret went on to explain that the fans turned the hearts against each other, causing the family to fight for years just for their entertainment. When all was said and done, Owen and Davey saw the light, and they embraced Brett as the Hart Foundation was reunited. Something that needs mentioned about this segment was how good Owen Hart was. He didn't say a word, but his facial expressions done the talking for him. Owen done a great job here of showing a different side to his usual smug character. Also, Brett's look at the crowd here when he was embracing Owen and Davey was priceless. 
On the April 21st edition of WWF Raw, one night removed from In Your House Revenge of the Taker, where Austin defeated Brett via DQ, Brett was booked into a street fight with the Texas Rattlesnake that didn't end too well for the hitman. Brett ended up taking a beating from Austin in the ring and in an ambulance. Owen and Davy got some revenge later that night, but the story here was Brian Pillman coming from the crowd to pick up the scraps as he continued the assault on Stone Cold. The following week on Raw, Brian Pillman aligned himself with the Hart Foundation. In reality, Brian Pillman had roots in Stampede Wrestling and was a Hart family friend, so it made sense. Brian Pillman asked the audience to bow their heads and pray for Bret Hart's well-being. On the same night, with Bret sitting in a wheelchair at the rampway, Owen won the Intercontinental title when he defeated Rocky Maivia in a match that he dedicated to his loving brother Bret. On this same night again, Jim Nathart returned to the WWF and joined Bret, officially becoming the fifth and final member of the Hart Foundation. So now the faction was set up and good to go, it was time to maintain their heat as the biggest heel faction in the WWF and they done a stellar job at this very task. Bret Hart and the foundation cut scathing promos ripping into America while promoting the great land of Canada. Bret also wasn't shy at firing personal shots at Shawn Michaels while on the mic, something that Bret still says to this day was all agreed backstage, but Shawn sometimes tells a different story. On the May 19th 1997 episode of Monday Night Raw, Bret Hart challenged Shawn Michaels to a match at the King of the Ring in which he said he would beat him in 10 minutes. Michaels accepted, but only if the members of the Hart Foundation were handcuffed to the four ring posts so they couldn't interfere. It was also on this night that Shawn Michaels made the sunny days comment when he said, Brett, believe me, you couldn't go 10 minutes in any situation, if you know what I mean. Even though lately you've had some sunny days, my friend, you still can't get the job done. Brett was still nursing his knee injury at this time, but there was a possibility he would be ready for King of the Ring. The 10 minute stipulation was to limit Brett's involvement if he was ready on time, but as it turned out, Brett was not ready to compete at King of the Ring. We can only guess how things may have turned out, in the long run, if Sean and Brett were able to work together at King of the Ring. Brett was, however, ready for In Your House in July that year, an event held in the Hart Foundation stomping grounds of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. It was also around this time that Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels had their backstage fight, which may have led to Shawn not being around as often as what he once was. Sean was not a part of Team USA in the tag main event at Canadian Stampede, something that would have been awesome to see. Sean Michaels standing in the ring in Calgary, ready to square off with Bret Hart after all this time and all this build up. But it wasn't meant to be. Still, the Canadian Stampede main event, where the Hart Foundation took on Steve Austin, Ken Shamrock, the Legion of Doom and Goldust, was an incredibly good match, made all the more special by the ravenous pro heart audience. Canadian Stampede, I feel, was the defining moment for the Heart Foundation in 1997. You can see the pride in every Heart member's face as the crowd completely explodes during their entrances and during the match. It was so different too, seeing the Hearts get this overwhelmingly positive response after weeks of getting booed by American audiences. It was unique and something you really need to see for yourself if you haven't already. The Hart Foundation ended up winning the match and there was a massive celebration with the extended Hart family in the ring. The Hearts were the biggest heroes to ever grace a wrestling ring in Canada at Canadian Stampede, but just two weeks later in Texas, only Satan himself could have been more hated. The Hart Foundation announced their SummerSlam plans as they each volunteered to a different match stipulation. Bret Hart promised to never wrestle in America again if he failed to win the WWF title in his match against The Undertaker. Owen Hart announced that Steve Austin would have to kiss his ass if Steve Austin couldn't defeat him for the IC title. Davy Boy Smith promised to eat a can of dog food if he couldn't beat Ken Shamrock. 
Brian Tillman promised to wear a dress if he couldn't beat Goldust. And finally, Jim Nathart promised to shave his goatee if any member of the Hart Foundation lost their match. At SummerSlam 97, Goldust kicked things off by defeating Brian Pullman, forcing him to wear a dress in subsequent matches. Now, because a member of the Hart Foundation lost the match, Jim Nathart was supposed to shave his goatee, but this never happened. It was just forgotten about. Ken Shamrock got himself disqualified after the Bulldog slapped his face with dog food, causing Shamrock to smash the can of dog food over Davy Boy's head. Steve Austin was able to defeat Owen Hart so he didn't have to kiss anyone's ass, but the match was still a disaster for Austin when he was dropped on his head when Owen delivered a pile driver. Bret Hart was finally able to capture the WWF Championship when he defeated The Undertaker after referee Shawn Michaels inadvertently hit Taker with a steel chair. I have to say also, the end of The Undertaker vs Bret Hart match with Shawn Michaels involvement was total genius, it was done really well. After hitting Undertaker with the steel chair, Shawn Michaels was effectively turned heel which led to the creation of Degeneration X, another heel faction taking up real estate in the WWF. Shawn would feud with The Undertaker while Bret Hart worked against the Patriot at In Your House Ground Zero. At the UK exclusive pay per view one night only, Shawn Michaels managed to get nuclear heat when he defeated Davy Boy Smith for the European title in England. This was quite shocking at the time, nobody expected Davy Boy to lose here, and when Shawn picked up the belt, a riot nearly broke out in the audience. Fast forward to Bad Blood, and Shawn Michaels earned the right to face Bret Hart when he defeated The Undertaker in the first ever Hell in a Cell match. On the same night, Bret and Davy Boy were involved in a flag match against the Patriot and Vader. This wasn't the Big Heart Foundation story of Bad Blood though, as it was announced on this pay per view that Brian Pullman had passed away. After a brief feud with The Nation, which was a little tasteless, the Hearts made their way to Survivor Series in 1997, which turned out to be the final night of the Hart Foundation. After Survivor Series and the Montreal incident, Brett, Davey and Jim Nadhart left for WCW, while Owen was not allowed to leave as Vince McMahon made him honour his contract. Apparently Davey and Nadhart were disposable to Vince McMahon so they could go, but only after Jim Nadhart was embarrassed on WWF Raw. Brett found some title success in WCW but he was never happy with the company and how things were ran. Davey and Nat Hart tagged up together but were largely unsuccessful in WCW. It seemed that Owen was maybe going to get his shot at the WWF title when he started a brief feud with Shawn Michaels, but nothing came of it. Owen stayed in the WWE, eventually joining the nation and forming a tag team with Jeff Jarrett. Today, out of all the members of the Hart Foundation, it's only Bret Hart who is still alive. <laughs>